Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is Saturday, August 15th, 2020, and this is the Flight Sim News. So, Lucas S. Wolta has put out yet another video talking about performance in DCS world, and this time out he's talking about something called culling. Hello everyone, today I'd like to give you uh, perhaps a little optimism about coming VR performance in DCS. On the left, I have enabled culling, an experimental rendering technique seemingly currently in development for DCS, and on the right, culling is off. That's how DCS is at the moment. DCS might not seem to have a big FPS difference between culling on and culling off, but let's play that once again and notice how it's a goddamn slideshow on the right. This is DCS as it is currently, culling on, experimental on the left. So. What is this? How the hell does this work? And why is it that once I get away from the runway, that performance suddenly aligns between the two? Well, that's because culling is a way to reduce the amount of polys that are rendered. It's a way of only rendering what's in the scene, what does the user see, and leave everything out. DCS doesn't currently do this, but this is what's seemingly in development right now. Let's take a look at a, another situation where we can see the benefits of culling. Here, once again, FPS is somewhat aligned. There's a bit of a benefit on culling, but it's mostly when we get into a dense area, say with cities and speed trees in there. This video is about three minutes and 39 seconds long. And if you watch it to the end, there is a uh, command line parameter that you can put in one of your uh, config files in DCS to turn calling on to see if it does anything for you. So I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself. So in other DCS news, uh, the weekend update is out and uh, it talks a lot about the Viper roadmap and features. Also, they're uh, talking about, you know, supporting their team in Belarus. Uh, Hornet and Viper TGP updates. So, in addition to the text that they have going here, they also put together a Viper and Hornet TGP updates video. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In our next open beta update, we plan to release updates for both the Viper and Hornet Lightning targeting pods. The Viper pod received many improvements, including cursor zero, improved HOTAS commands, air-to-air -air mode, and it now much better matches its real-world counterpart. For the Hornet pod, we've added several new items by popular demand, like a coordinate display and the North Arrow. Let's get started. This is the airfield. Expand back out. And now here we have the SP or snow plant mode. When that's selected, it'll automatically uh, place the uh, target pod looking down at one half the length of the uh, uh, current uh, range setting. And from this mode, you can still designate and move around. Let's cursor zero back to the airfield again. Uh, coming down as target, uh, once we have uh, offset endpoints, we'll have the ability to cycle between uh, the target and various offset endpoints. Uh, coming down here in the corner, we have a countdown timer. If there's no target designated for attack, it's the uh, time to reach that stair point, which is also indicated uh, here on the HUD. If you have it designated for a weapon release, it's the time to weapon release. It's a pretty cool video, and it goes into some real detail about what they've been doing with the uh, lightning targeting pod for uh, both the Viper and Hornet. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself. Here's a pretty cool piece of news. Uh, Wags posted this. It says, Dear all, Ergla has been listening to your concerns about the lack of sea area for naval operations and they have now greatly expanded the sea area to the west of the map. Cyprus is clearly missing in the attached image, but that will come later during the early access period. As mentioned in a previous video, we are still determining the how and when of how the addition of Cyprus will be handled. So they've expanded the sea, 
to allow for some better carrier operations. And this is the Syria map. Uh, I will throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. So here's another video I happened upon from Jeff Favignano. Uh, this is supposedly a new helicopter simulator. It's called First Look at Helicopter Simulator. Throttle. There she goes. And we're in the air, just like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're okay. We're okay. Little bit. Okay, that means we need more throttle. More throttle, Jeff. There we go. <laughs> She's touchy. Okay, we're flying. I don't know what else they really want from us right now, but pull my uh, throttle back a little bit here, back into the green. Whoa, a little bit more collective here. A little bit more collective here. We're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. Oh, my God. <laughs> Careful now. I had to use full throttle on that. It was scary. All right. Whoa. It's an interesting and entertaining video. This guy is a character. Um, not, not sure what to think about the helicopter flight simulator. The terrain looks kind of crappy. Um, but... I thought it might be of interest to some of you guys, so there it is. I'll throw a link to the video in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. It's about 31 minutes and 31 seconds. All right, in IL-2 Stormovic Cliffs of Dover uh, Desert Wings Tubrick. Hopefully I've pronounced it right this time, because every time I put together a video and pronounce it, a bunch of people tell me that there's five different ways to pronounce this. So, is it Tubrick? Did I get it right this time, guys? Let me know in the comments section there. Uh, it looks like there's a patch that will address a variety of different things for the Desert Wings Tubrick, even though this is called a Cliffs of Dover patch 02. Um, and the weird thing is, is I was reading some of the stuff in here, and I guess you've got to, like, do some stuff manually because they don't want to overwrite some of your files. Uh, so I guess if you've created some missions or whatnot, there's a possibility it would have overwritten some stuff. And uh, one of the things I noticed, and the developers pointed this out to me after one of my previous videos, was the Eagles of Tubrick campaign that I was flying uh, my uh, 109 E7s had bombs on them that kept falling off as I was, you know, pivoting around. And uh, those weren't supposed to be there. So they're removing those from the first five missions of the campaign. Uh, there's a variety of other little tweaks and fixes as well. Uh, if you have it, my guess is uh, log into Steam and it should auto update it. Uh, I haven't logged in. I've been kind of on vacation for the past few days and haven't really touched my PC in for the past few days until today. And uh, I'm going to jump in and uh, hopefully Steam will update my Wings of Desert Wings Tubrick as well. And uh, I'm going to jump in there and do some more flying and uh, see how these uh, fixes and improvements affect things for me. It also says it's removed top head armor on the 109s and 109E7s, so maybe I will be able to turn my head and actually see my 6. That was another complaint I had, is I would turn around and I'm like, there's just this giant block there. You can't, you have no, like, you know, view whatsoever of your 6 in that thing. So... I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. Happened to find this, too. Um, the guys over at Humble Bundle uh, have Desert Wings Tubrick on sale for $59.49. I thought this was already on sale on the official IL-2 website. I'll have to look at that, but I'm sure that it's probably a steam code anyway yes there's the little steam symbol right there um, so you can get it there or you can get it direct from the guys at uh, IL2 uh, and 1C games uh, I prefer to usually buy these things directly because it helps the developer out a little better but um, again if you want to save a couple bucks on it I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself air combat sim so the newest um, episode of the air combat sim. 
uh, talks pretty much about the Raven 1 campaign for DCS World. Uh, I haven't listened to this yet, um, but it looks like they've got uh, Kevin Hoser Miller and uh, Vincent Jello Aiello on the uh, podcast this week. And uh, the topic is the Raven 1 series from Baltic Dragon for the FA-18C Hornet from Eagle Dynamics. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself. VKB Sim. These guys have kind of been quiet for a while and uh, it looks like they're putting together um, a draw for a free VKB Gladiator NXT. And from the look of things, it looks like the NXT is a new uh, product from VKB. And uh, they're calling it Gladiator NXT, Modular Flight Control System. And they show a few button boxes and some throttle uh, levers with some buttons on it as well. Uh, there's a YouTube video here in addition to that. an interesting video to say the least. Um, I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself. Now a while ago I had done uh, a video on the uh, SU-57 mod uh, for DCS World from Cuban Ace and uh, a few days ago he posted this. He, he goes on to say I'm working extremely hard in order to bring you guys a one-of-a-kind experience regarding the new SU-57 EFM plus ASM build for DCS World. And uh, it's to include multi-role radar with air-to-ground and air-to-air -air radar modes, all of the weapons used by the SU-57, animated weapons bay doors, animated gun port, EFM flight model, FM digital computer, uh, DIRCM defense suite, navigation, uh, thrust vectoring both manually and in combination with the FADEX system, uh, project module being developed with C++ and Lua in mind in order to meet the DCS standards and both external model and cockpit refined from scratch in order to be on par with DCS standards model. Uh, legal matter, NDA document has been created in order to protect our work in regards to the SU-57. Uh, this project is no longer open source and everything will be protected. So please, I'm sorry, but we can't share open source code for security reasons in order to show that we are serious about our work with Russia. Our research and travel. Next year, I'll be going to Russia in order to do proper research and get clearances in order to properly research the SU-57. I will let you know the future of the SU-57 project next year. And there's a couple images of the uh, mod. Uh, the mod's still available. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and uh, you can check it out for yourself. Um, I believe at the moment it uh, it overwrites I want to say the F-15 or was it the uh, SU-27 that's in there. It's been a while since I've done the video so I, I even have to go back and look. I haven't used it since then. Uh, but it, it's promising and uh, it's nice to see that the guys you know gonna put that time and effort into it so uh, again I'll throw a link to this in the video description and you can go check it out for yourself IL-2 Stormovic Great Battles series news so uh, the other day I had mentioned the update that they're getting ready to put out for 4.009 and it looks like now they're talking about the uh, P-51 B and C 
that is being developed for the Battle of Normandy. And now they've put together a variety of work in progress images. And uh, that's about it for this update. There's not a lot in there uh, other than, you know, they talk about uh, uh, there's going to be a special canopy called the Malcolm Hood, which was used in rather significant numbers by Mustang pilots. Uh, there will also be as many as three options for gun sights, one of which will be gyroscopic. And uh, they go on to talk about how that, like this one was actually, even though it's a predecessor to the P-51D, that the uh, C and uh, B models were in some ways a little bit better, that it was superior to the D model in speed at ground level and maneuverability. So it should be interesting to see this in the Battle of Normandy, and uh, I'm hoping that's real soon because uh, I, I have the Razor back, and uh, I'd love to see what the next plane is in this series. Uh, as they go, as usual, everything just continues to get better with the Great Battle series. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. All right, guys, last up is Casmo TV again. This time out, he puts together his uh, first impressions, essentially, of flying the gazelle. And uh, the little blurb here says, Some recommended settings and my take on the discussion about flight model and realism. Um, he jumps in and flies the gazelle. Looks like it's about a 16-minute video. Here. have not picked it up off the ground. The only thing I've done is mess with some of the key binds just to make sure that, uh, you know, I don't do something totally stupid. So, um, probably one of the biggest debated modules in DCS is the Gazelle. Um, I've seen a lot of chatter about, oh, it's arcadey or it's not real. And then I've talked to real Gazelle pilots who are like, no, actually, it's pretty good, but you got to do some work on your curves and everything. So, um, now that's interesting. So, setting your joystick right might be part of the issue. Interesting. What irrelevant? I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm just kind of talking out loud here, but it just seems kind of weird to to pin that and say, "Well, see, it's it's garbage because it does that." Um, maybe you know, I've I've never tried to land the K50 upside down either. Maybe it'll do it. You know, I don't know. But I think generally speaking, it handles pretty well, and I think it's a believable flight model. Um, no, it's a fun little bird. I guess the last thing I'll say on the topic is there was a, a quite a bit of discussion. Uh, on my Discord channel today about the Gazelle and with uh, some members of Polychop that are that are lurking there on the on the Discord as well and you know the conversation came to the flight model so there has been some changes over the years like I was watching a video earlier of a guy talking about it being on rails and and it, it definitely was more stable than I think it is now um, but Polychop acknowledged that there are some some things that they can tweak and some things that they've learned while we're interesting so an actual helicopter pilot says that it feels believable I never really thought there was too much of an issue with the gazelle as well now granted I am no expert on helicopter flight models um, I've always had a hard time getting the damn thing to hover, to be honest, but again, I'm not a real-world helicopter pilot. Uh, I've only ever flown them in flight simulators, going back all the way to the 90s, to some of the early ones. And, uh, like I said, I felt it was believable, but like he said, a lot of people always say, oh, it's on rails, it's not right. But, you know, the internet is full of armchair pilots that, you know, I, I think the problem with social media today is that you know you get a group of people saying something and a new guy comes in he's just going to repeat what he heard nine nine times out of ten that's usually what happens so people are like yeah yeah that flight models on rails that flight model isn't realistic and they don't even really know you know what I mean so it's interesting to see how these things spread and, and what happens and whatnot but I never had a problem with the Gazelle. I always thought it, it, it was a believable helicopter flight model based on all the other simulated helicopters that I've ever flown. And uh, it's nice to see that a real Kiowa pilot actually has to say some nice things about it. And at the same time, Polychop realizes there are some things they can do to make it better. And I'm sure they will in time. So that about covers it for the Flight Sim News today. Um, 
I got I have a ton of video to edit and put together. I had uh on my vacation time took a trip to the the National United States Air Force Museum uh in Dayton, Ohio at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base again this year. I did that last year and then I think before that it had been 20 years since I'd been there. And uh I was surprised to learn that they in a year's time they actually move some things around so they they change up their displays a little bit at least with the aircraft that they can move around. And um uh, I was able to spend more time this year than I was last year and uh the museum was a blast and it took us about 5 hours to go through the whole place uh and uh ran out of battery power on our phones and wasn't thinking that I should have probably bought one of those battery backup pieces. Uh so there's a couple planes I didn't get to cover. Um one of which was the B1 uh and I think I have some footage from last year I might be able to uh mix in to make get some coverage of that at least but i have a lot better video footage than i did of last year cuz like an idiot i held my phone you know straight up and down in portrait mode when i recorded that last year uh this year i have a lot more uh more detailed and i think 4k footage to put together with some cool uh narration and uh information on the planes as we go and i think it'll be good fun it's going to take me a while to get all the uh you know coverage off of my phone onto my pc that's such a pain in the ass with an iphone um but that's what i'm working on guys so i should have some awesome footage of the united states air force museum and uh a lot more videos to come uh like i said i took a few days off so things are going to be a little slow here over the next few days uh putting stuff out but uh that's what i'm up to so things are looking up guys so as always thanks so much for watching uh please subscribe to the channel feel free to hit that like button and until next time guys